You know, one-liners are really big here on After Prison Show. Sometimes Dave or I, mostly Dave, sometimes we say some pretty slick things that are just kind of catchy. Eminem, MGK, you ain't got nothing on these punchline one-liners that After Prison Show be coming up with. But sometimes, yes, we come up with some pretty catchy one-liners, just like this one that I want to share with you that I myself came up with, and I'm pretty proud of this one. Y'all ready for this? Beat down from the seat down. It's not really... It's not really as good as I thought it was, is it? But think about that. Beat down from the seat down. Boy, you looking like you just got beat down from the seat down. I don't know. But I promise you, beat down from the seat down most certainly applies to this prison story that I'm getting ready to share with all of you. And what this story is about is about saying the wrong thing in prison and how doing so could lead to detrimental results. And you know, I'll be the first to admit that this has definitely happened to me. I have definitely said the wrong things while locked up. In fact, a perfect example of that is a guy who was nicknamed Tyson that I myself would end up fighting. I definitely said the wrong thing to this dude and, you know, we would end up fighting or more so this guy would end up knocking me out. All stemming from saying the wrong thing while in prison. Uh, but thankfully for me in this story, it's not going to be me getting knocked out. As much as I'm sure a lot of you out there would just love to be hearing all about. Joe, just tell us all of the stories about all of the different times you got knocked out. I'm sure you got knocked out quite a few different times. And yes, well not quite a few, but you know, I did get knocked out a time or two. Or maybe three times. I don't like reliving that though. And, and you know, some of it I can't even remember. You know why? Because I was knocked out. And the story that I'm getting ready to share with you, though it won't involve an individual getting knocked out, it definitely involves a really crazy fight that took place, and it all stems from saying the wrong thing. Now, with this story, I cannot give this guy's real name, and the, and the reason for that is because this guy, he's a friend of mine on Facebook, like some other folks have been friends of mine on Facebook, too, who we've told stories about. So I'm going to have to give this guy an alias, because just like other folks that we've given aliases to, this is definitely a very embarrassing story. And you know, there's going to be things that happen to you while you're locked up that you are just going to want to forget just as soon as they happen. Such as me, again, mentioning that Tyson fight. You know, when I got knocked out and then when I recovered and, and I was laying there on the ground inside of a cooler in a prison kitchen, I was wanting to forget about that just as soon as I was picking myself up off of that ground. As groggy and discombobulated as I was doing so. So I'm definitely going to be using an alias in this video. And as for the other guy in question in this, I don't even remember his name. And the crazy thing is, this guy was my celly. So the story begins with an introduction to both of the prisoners who were involved in this unbelievably crazy fight that took place that, again, I kind of feel responsible for because I probably said the wrong thing. But first, I want to introduce you to my celly. And again, I cannot remember this guy's name. And you know, that's crazy to think about being just how crazy this story is altogether. But my celly, this young black kid who was super frail, real skinny kid and Ultimately, I thought he was pretty cool. When he first moved into my cell, you know, we had no issues. We had this top corner cell in the cell block. We were out of the way. You know, I love this cell. For whatever reason, those top corner cells are sometimes bigger than the other cells. And this cell was one of those bigger cells. It was, again, away from all of the craziness. And, you know, that could be a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. The corner cells or those back cells in the cell blocks are oftentimes where a lot of fighting takes place, a lot of illegal activity, a lot of crazy activity, if you can read between the lines, tends to take place. But it's also a luxury cell in the cell block. Again, it's bigger than most of the cells and it's away from most everything else. That's good. It's about as far away from everything in the jail or the prison as you can get, you know, still being locked up. And this would be the cell that I would share with this young kid. Now again, to describe this kid, he was young, he was skinny, and he had gold teeth. And now, I didn't know too much about gold teeth. I've never had fronts, I've never, you know, I might have wanted them when I was younger. God, I can't even imagine what I would look like with some damn golds in my mouth. But, you know, to paint the picture of this kid, he was young, he was skinny, and he had golds. And now, when you get locked up, you know, if you've got gold teeth, usually you could take those golds out, those fronts out, and, you know, they'll put them in your property. Well, this kid, he didn't have his taken out. And in fact, these things were cemented in his mouth. And I guess that's like an option that you got whenever you get these things in the first place. You can get them cemented in. But what I would quickly come to realize is getting gold fronts cemented in your mouth is not something you should ever do. And the reason for that, which, again, I would quickly learn about, 
is because when they're cemented in your mouth, you've got no way to brush your teeth. No way at all. So those teeth that you've got underneath that little itty bitty bit of gold in your mouth, however, like, I don't even know how much some gold fronts are. What are they, like $150, $200? I know they ain't very much at all. Not for some basic ones, at least. And that little bit of money that you're going to spend on them gold teeth does not even begin to compare to how much you're going to be paying in dental repair bills trying to get your teeth fixed that are decaying underneath those things. And again, all of this is news to me. I'm seeing this kid, he comes in, he's got these golds. I'm like, wow, I didn't know you could have golds in the jail. Boy, you stunned. You stunned. You got some gold teeth. What the, what the, what, what is that smell? As soon as the dude walked into the cell, I mean, it was like, dude, God, boy. You smell like you belong on an episode of The Walking Dead, man. What in the God, is that your socks? I mean, your socks were brand new. Where's this smell coming from? You know, it would actually take me a little while to recognize that this smell was coming from his mouth from that decay and that deterioration of his teeth and gums and gingivitis and all sorts of stuff that was taking place inside this man's spit box. It was nasty. And you know, you don't really want to call somebody out immediately as soon as they come to yourself. I don't know this kid. Yeah, he's young, skinny, frail, he's got some gold teeth, but I don't really know. He could be trained to go. And I gotta be honest with you, Joe ain't really built like that. I mean, if I can pinpoint exactly what the problem is, I'm gonna call you out on it. But I'm trying to figure this thing out. I have no idea where this smell is coming from. All I know is as soon as he crossed that threshold into the cell, it went from regular jail smells, which isn't very good at all, to immediate, what in the God, my God, it feels like my eyes is watering. Did you bring that in here with you? What you got in your luggage? What you got in your jail bag? You got a body in there? It would take me a little while to pinpoint where the smell was coming from. And the way that I would be able to do so is this guy found out that I was doing tattoos. He was super like, yeah, I want to get a tattoo. Hey, can you put VA on my neck? Absolutely, man. I got you. Just give me like, just give me like three ramen noodle soups, man. I don't make commissary. I don't have a dollar to my name. Three ramen noodle soups? Boy, that's like Thanksgiving for the kid. I need that. And it ain't nothing but a VA. I mean, we could do that all day. You know, I should have probably got hazard pay on top of that because as I'm tattooing this kid's neck, you know, he's asking me, he's like, how, how's it coming? As soon as this guy began to muster the first syllable, the first H in house, it was like, <laughs> what? That, that's coming out your mouth? That's what that smell, that, that smell is coming out of your mouth? Hey, you need, to get, you need to get you some cement remote. You gotta get that out your mouth, kid. You too young to have your mouth smelling? How you hold a conversation with anybody before? They probably locked you up because of that. That's a malicious wound. That is an assault charge. You speaking to me as an assault charge? I'm ready to go down to the magistrate right now and take out charge. What? Legitimately, that was probably one of the toughest tattoos that I ever did in my life because I literally had to do that tattoo like this. <laughs> don't, don't say nothing, it's almost done. Can't remember the kid's name though. That's the damnest thing about the situation. I cannot remember his name. You know, for the sake of this video, let's just call this kid the mouth. The mouth or mouthy, Mr. Mouth. Mr. Mouth. Now I gotta go ahead and introduce you to the other contender who would do battle with the mouth, Mr. Mouth. Mouthpiece, mouth guard. We're gonna call him Colgate. Colgate, boy, that's a strong prison that, hey Colgate! Colgate! Ain't that the name of a toothpaste? Yeah, that's exactly what you need in your mouth. You need to eat that stuff. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, eat a whole tube of it. Colgate, they got it on commissary. Colgate is contestant number one. Let me go ahead and introduce you to contestant number two who would do battle with Colgate. Now, I definitely know this guy's name because, again, he's on my Facebook friends page. And, you know, if you're seeing this video, I apologize. But you, you got to admit, this was probably the craziest situation you dealt with while you were locked up. And I'm sorry. I, I still would like to have you on after prison show. Contestant number two, we're going to call this dude, uh, we're going to call him white boy. I don't mean that to be any kind of racial thing at all, but that's what I want to call this dude. Because, you know, Colgate, he's this young, skinny black kid, young kid. Well, white boy was the same exact thing, except he was a white dude and my celly was a black dude. Now, the reason I want to use this nickname is because, mind you, in this jail, I was the only white dude in this cell block until white boy came up in there. And this just sounds crazy, me even using this name. Joe, you probably should have thought of a better nickname. This almost sounds bad. I don't mean it to sound bad. I'm just really giving you like the demographics. I need to portray this for whatever reason. Uh, but white boy would end up coming into the cell block and you know, he sees me 
And he kind of like latches on to me. Probably a big reason for that is because we're the same color, we're the same race or whatever, but whatever. You know, I talk with this kid from time to time, but I talk to everybody in here. You know, I'm cool with everybody. And it just so happens that this young dude, white boy, he tries to kind of latch on to me. And you know, he's also having some problems with some of the dudes who are locked up in here. And I got to emphasize, like, everybody who's in this jail, in this cell block, they are all snitching. They're all jumping on cases, and they're all proud of this. And this is something that I don't do at all. This is something that guys will literally come up to me and be like, Joe, Yo, you ain't telling? Why you ain't telling? I mean, for real, you need to try to give back some of that time. You don't need to do all that time. Dude, you definitely don't need to be giving me no advice. I'm going to be all right. I'm going to do mine. As crazy as this is, this is legitimately the way that it was. And I didn't really know nothing about White Boy. The crazy thing is I saw him on the news. I saw what he was getting locked up for, and then all of a sudden he comes into the cell block, and it's for some pretty bad charges. Nothing violent, but bad charges nonetheless. Charges that definitely are going to carry a lot of time. And all of a sudden, here comes White Boy into the cell block like, Hey, yo, White Dude, hey, you, me, we, we the same. He kind of latched on to me. And again... This dude was having some problems, you know? I don't know why he was having some problems. I didn't really have too many problems in here. And honestly, I don't know why. I did not fit in in here at all. I wasn't telling. I wasn't down with the whole snitch crew. But maybe it was because of the fact that I was older, and I am kind of a big dude. You know, I just look like this, though. Don't get it twisted. I will be the first to admit that in most cases, I am big for nothing. But let me also clarify. From time to time, I do be getting my thing off. I do. I do be getting a W. It may be seldom, it may be very seldom. I don't know why it was that I didn't have problems. I don't know why it was that this dude had problems. Maybe it was because he was young. Maybe it was because he was like just a skinny little stick figure of a dude. He was tall, like I remember that. I don't know. Maybe they just thought he was a fish. He was fresh meat. He was the newbie. I had been in this jail at this point for almost two years. So maybe, you know, I was kind of like an OG. I'm really just trying to honestly figure it out for myself as I explain it to you guys why I wasn't having problems. And he was. I was also a tattoo man as well. So that, you know, that probably, as crazy as it is to admit this, that probably definitely carried a lot of weight. I was needed. Whereas this kid didn't really bring it to the table. Uh, but with the fact that this kid was having problems from time to time, I will never forget this. This kid comes up to me this one day and he's like, hey, Joe, I need you to do me a favor. Can you watch my commissary bag? And this kid's got one of these Christmas bags full of goodies. Zoom, zooms, and wham, whams, ramen soups, ev everything. And you know what? I, I also got to admit this. Maybe that was why I kind of allowed this kid to latch on to me. You know, you're going to have friends while locked up that are only your friends because of what benefit they can be to you. And I know that sounds horrible, but it's the truth. This kid had commissary. I didn't. Hey, yo, white boy, you could definitely be my homeboy. Hey, this my homeboy, right? I don't want them problems. I ain't going to protect them, but damn. Can I get a cup of coffee? You know, this is embarrassing for me, too, to admit these things, but... I'm always going to keep it 100 with y'all. He comes up to me one day and he asks me if I could watch his commissary bag. He's like, I got to go do something today. And I'm thinking to myself, we locked up. What you, what? You got to go do something? What you got, a, a meeting? What you got, an appointment? You got a job interview? Like, what you got to do? We locked up. You got court? You going to see your lawyer? I don't know if it was like me being naive or me probably just not wanting to admit what I probably already knew, which was, if you tell me you got something to go do, you're probably going out there to do something you probably shouldn't be doing. How many times did I just say probably right there? Take a shot for every time. I already know. But he asked me if I could watch the commissary bag. Joe, can you watch this Christmas bag of goodies I got right here? You know, help yourself to anything you might want. You want to you wanna ramen? Shh. You already told me I can help myself. I'm definitely eating me this, this icy white. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to watch it. Can I get this honey bun too? I got you, man. You'll be all right. Go take care of the job interview or whatever you got. What you, what you got, a doctor's appointment? I watched the commissary bag, this kid's gone, and you know, he's not gone for an hour, two hours, half a day. This kid's gone all day. And you know, now I'm already knowing, okay. I'm kind of hoping he don't come back, because I want this Christmas bag. I'm like, boy, hope he don't come back. All these damn icy whites and white girls and Christina Aguilera's I got right here. Boy, I'm full. You know, I'm used to being the hungry man while locked up. Now I got, I got some things. Hope he don't come back. I hope they transfer them. But throughout the course of the day while he's gone, you know, some of these other snitch prisoners who I have to deal with because that's all I'm surrounded by, you know, they're coming up to me and they're like, hey, Joe, where white boy at? Where, where that white boy at? I don't know. He just told me he had something to do. He might be, <laughs> I have no idea. He might got swimming practice or something. They got a pool in here? Joe, you know what he out there doing, don't you? You know what he out there doing. I don't have the slaves. I don't care. You know he probably telling. Well, he ain't telling on me because he don't know nothing about me. I told him I was locked up for a jaywalking charge. You ain't going to snitch on me. 
My lawyer done told me, don't tell nobody in here about my case. She told me how bad y'all was in here. Think I'm telling y'all, yeah, I got 14 jaywalking charges and facing life. You can't, what you gonna tell him? Yeah, I watched him. He crossed the street when he wasn't supposed to. It was a green light. He crossed that street. He did it right there. They, they was that bad. Legitimately, that's how bad this jail was. It was sometime in the evening time. I want to say like five or six. You get locked down a little bit before that. They do count. They pass out trays. You eat your tray in your cell. And then they, you know, they let you out. After count, after dinner trays, it's about 6, 6.30 in the evening time. So they open the bars up and we're able to come out of our cells. And, you know, he comes back. Here he comes. Damn, why you have to come back? I thought they was transferring you, man. <clears throat> I can see him walking down the hallway being escorted by a guard. It's nothing but plexiglass windows. You can see a lot of what's going on out in the hallway. So I see him coming back. He comes in. He comes right up to the cell, comes in my cell. He's like, yeah, Joe, hey, thanks for watching my bag, man. You know, thank you. And when he gets in there, he smells straight like cigarettes. This kid smells like a pack of smoked cigarettes. He smells like an ashtray. So I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm used to smelling bad breath. Now I'm smelling nothing but cigarettes. So he tells me. He's like, man, boy, you never believe where I was at today, Joe. I, you ain't got to tell me. I can smell it. I can smell it. I know where you was at. You bring back any cigarettes? You didn't. Joe, man, they done took me down to the station, dog. They took me down to the station. You know, this has got to be the face that I'm looking at. I'm like complete dumbfounded. Like, why do I care? Why are you even telling me this? And he was proud of this, too. You know, like, he was proud of it. What'd you eat for lunch today? Bologna and cheese, you, you eat some sweat meat, mystery meat for lunch. I eat Chick-fil-A, Joe. Chick-fil-A is what they fed me. I got to smoke some cigarettes. You know, he put like four syllables in cigarettes. I got to smoke me some cigar cig cigarettes. I tried it before, I didn't, I don't know how to do it. And I got to see my girl today. Damn, you got all that just for telling? Shit, I'm contemplating telling too. I ain't got nobody come see me, but Chick-fil-A sound real good right I shouldn't even laugh and joke about it. I never snitch, never would. No matter how many Chick-fil-A sandwiches, visits from a girlfriend that I didn't have at the time, or cigarettes you would allow me to smoke, that sounds like a great deal. You're going to throw somebody else's life away just so you can get a number one combo from Chick-fil-A and spend 10 minutes with your girl and smoke a couple of Marlboro menthols. Yeah, you, you a stand-up dude, man, stand-up. But he's telling me all of this like he's proud about it. I'm like, dude, take your stuff, you know. Now I'm keeping you at arm's distance for real. I'm disappointed. Like, I'm not only disappointed, I'm like, you know, God, like, I should have known. At the same time, I should have known. And though I would keep this dude at arm's distance, I would be uh, lying if I sat here and told you I didn't still continue to kick it with the dude because I was kicking it with all snitches. It was the only people that it was surrounding me. If I wanted to talk to anybody in this housing unit or cell block that wasn't telling, now mind you, I didn't know if my cellmate was telling. The young kid that, you know, with the bad breath. I didn't know if he was telling Colgate. I didn't know him well enough to know if, you know, he was doing any of that just yet. The only way that I could concrete, like, absolutely guarantee that I wasn't talking to somebody who was telling, and if I wanted to have a conversation with that person, I would have to talk to my pillow. Or a roll of toilet paper drawing a little Wilson face on it. That's the only way I could guarantee that I would not be talking to somebody who was testifying against somebody else about to throw their whole life away just in an effort for them to get a time cut. So, of course, the people that I would have to associate with, that was the type of people, were people who were most certainly and probably testifying on somebody else. But I'm saying all that because it was somewhere along the lines, and it probably came up in a conversation about tattoos. Hey, Joe, you be doing tattoos? You damn right I be doing tattoos. Trying to get a tattoo is only going to cost you that entire Christmas bag of commissary you got right there. All them icy white Christina Aguilera white girls and them regular honey buns you got, all them zoom zoom and win. Whatever you want, I'm going to tattoo it on you. With your telling ass. He was like, yo, did you do the, the, the VA on your celly neck? That joint look good. Yeah, I did that. It wasn't pretty, though. I had to do the whole tattoo like this. Somewhere along the lines, I said the wrong thing. I said something about my cellmate's breath to this guy, white boy, the snitch. I ought to call him Christina Aguilera. That sounds like a better name. Christina Aguilera. That's what I'm going to nickname him. So we got Colgate and Christina Aguilera. Because, you know, an icy white honey bun, a honey bun with white icing on it, they oftentimes refer to these as white girls while locked up or also... Pretty ingenious, if you ask me. A Christina Aguilera. Hey, you got any of them Christina Aguilera's over there? Two for three. I got two. You give me three back when you go to the store. You don't even go to the store. You ain't getting nothing from me. I said the wrong thing. I know I did. Because he wouldn't have known about my, my cellmate's breath any other way. So I mentioned all of that 
to get to the climax of this story, the fight. And this fight would happen sometime after breakfast time. You know, you're locked down, you're sleeping, they, they roll the bars, or they feed you breakfast first. They feed you while you're locked down. So around like 6 in the morning, they come, they pass out trays. It might be 5, 5.30. They're passing out the breakfast trays. You get up, you eat your breakfast, and then they open the bars. For whatever reason, I was outside of the cell, like down at the table doing something. I had to be, because I remember when this took place, I was in the day room, and this fight would take place in the day room. Now, oftentimes after breakfast, guys will eat the tray, go back to sleep, make their bed, lay on top of their blanket and their sheets. As long as your bed's made, you can sleep all day here. Some guys, they wake up. Maybe they'll start working out first thing in the morning. Maybe they get up and they read because in the morning time, it's going to be the most peaceful time because most everybody's asleep. I'm out of the cell and something else that takes place during this time when guys will go back to sleep or will get up and just, you know, do their little morning routine is you'll have guys who are laying in their bunks and they'll be having conversations with other guys who are laying in their bunks. Hey, yo, Dudu. Hey, Dudu, you see that game last night? You see the end of that game? That game was crazy. You heard about it on the radio. You are in cell 14. This dude is in cell 5. Why are y'all talking across the entire cell block at 622 in the morning? Get up and take that conversation out to the day room. It's something I never said. Never. Because, again, Joe wasn't really built like that. So I wasn't going to be all rah-rah. But you would definitely be thinking that. You're trying to go back to sleep, or most people are. And you got two guys from complete opposite sides of the cell block trying to hold a conversation like they sports center. Boy, you see that top 10 play, doo-doo. Hey, doo-doo, you up. I'm pretty sure the whole housing unit's up now. You rude person. Have some common courtesy. Oh, wait, we locked up. There ain't no such thing as common courtesy. But there is respect, though. You better have some spec. You better put some spec on their name. Or you're going to be a spec stain on the floor. So I want to paint that picture for you because that's kind of how the conversation begins with my cellmate Colgate and Christina Aguilera. And now, mind you, these two dudes, they were kind of cool because they were both young. They were, they were probably the two youngest guys in the cell block. And when I say young, they were like in their early 20s, I believe. Maybe they were like 19 or 20. But these two dudes begin like laughing and joking with each other. And mind you, Colgate is my cellie. We're all the way in that top corner cell. Christina Aguilera is somewhere down in the middle. He's on the bottom tier, somewhere down in the middle. But they're talking to each other from the cells. And again, they're laughing and joking with each other. And one thing about laughing and joking with somebody while locked up is it is very easy for that laughing and joking, that little friendly camaraderie, that little friendly ha-ha to be taken to the fight level. It's very easy. All you got to do is just say the wrong thing, offend somebody, and boom. It's time to put your shoes on and knuck if you buck for real. And ironically, just to throw this in here, that whole fight that took place between me and Tyson started off the exact same way. We were friends first, and we were just laughing and joking at first, and then I said the wrong thing, and then he said the wrong thing, and then I called that dude out. Why did I do that? Again, some things that happen while locked up, you just want to forget about them as soon as they happen. But Colgate and Christina Aguilera, they just laughing and joking with each other, and then Christina Aguilera says something about my cellmate's breath. And you know, by this point, the entire cell block, all of the prisoners who were in this cell block, this is sort of like a little inside joke amongst each other. They all know about my cellie's breath. In fact, when they talk to my cellie, because they like them, but when they talk to him, they hold a conversation with him like this. Hey, Colgate, what you was talking about? Hey, hey, Colgate, hey, turn that way when you're talking to me, Colgate. I can still smell your breath. They all know my cellmate's breath stinks. And I'm not really sure if anybody's really brought it to his attention up until when Christina Aguilera, at about 6.22 in the morning, makes some kind of a funny little ha-ha joke about Colgate's breath. And when he does this, all of that laughing and joking and a little friendly ha-ha stuff goes completely out the window. And when Christina Aguilera makes that little joke about Colgate's breath, the entire cell block, even the guys that was asleep, bust out, bu I mean laughing. You would have thought you was at the comedy club or something. And now you got to just imagine, you're Colgate, you're sitting up in your bunk, and you hear this. You hear Christina Aguilera make the joke, and then you hear the whole cell block just go ham. Times that by 10, because you probably got at least 30 people in this cell block. That's got to be an embarrassing situation for Goldgate to find himself in, and obviously it was. Obviously it struck the wrong chord in him, because it would be immediately that my celly, Mr. Colgate was running down the stairs. And I don't know if it was hearing them footsteps coming down them stairs, hearing my celly jumping off his bunk. But Christina Aguilera, oh, he was going to go. He was ready as well. And, you know, he jumped up. 
And you know, this surprises me, because again, I'm sitting in the day room, I'm watching all of this take place. I'm, I'm hearing my silly jump off his bunk, I see him running down the steps, and I see Christina Aguilera running out the cell with his shoes on as well. And it surprises me, because I'm like, damn, I ain't even really know Christina Aguilera was gonna go like that. I thought he might just like cop a plea, you know, stand down, stand, man down, stand down. Stand down before you a man down. Another one liner right there. With Christina Aguilera running out of the cell and my Sally Colgate running down the stairs, these two would meet in the middle, right there in the middle of the day room. And again, mind you, day room, bunch of plexiglass windows. You got the hallway right there, right across from the hallway. You got the guards booth, bunch of plexiglass windows right there. They definitely going to see what's about to take place. And when these dudes met right there in the middle, I don't know if it was like preloaded, but my Sally was coming down them stairs like this, just winding up. And he hit Christina Aguilera with like this Three Stooges type of over the head haymaker. BOOM! When Colgate hit Christina Aguilera, Christina Aguilera kind of tumbled. But he caught himself. And when he caught himself, he grabbed Colgate. And when he grabbed him, he scooped him up. BOOM! And he dumped him. And I'm like, damn Christina Aguilera, boy! Damn how you eat that over the head wound up tornado haymaker and then you recovered enough to get, mm, mm, I mean, you just took out the garbage with that dude. Christina Aguilera dumped Colgate. Boom, boom, sound effect, boom. Colgate, I mean, immediately right on his feet. But now, now, he's only got one arm. He's only got one, one throwing device. And I'm not paying attention to what's going on because, you know, my, my celly, he's flapping around like this. This is what he's doing. And this thing right here just ain't working at all. So I'm like, damn, did he break his arm? Did Christina Aguilera just break Colgate's arm? Like, what happened? I'm watching my celly fight Christina Aguilera with one arm, and I'm watching Christina Aguilera eat a lot. Eat. Eat like a feast, like a meal. Eat a lot of these one-arm jabs from Colgate. <laughs> but he's still trying to go. But with every jab, Christina Aguilera gets a little lower. <laughs> Now, I don't know how long this fight actually lasted for, but it felt like it lasted for quite a long time. It might not have, though. But I am enthralled in this situation. I'm like, oh, my God, boy. Colgate got one hand. He got, I want to say he got them hands. Boy, hey, Colgate, you got some hands, don't you? He had one hand because the other one was broke-winged. And, and Christina Aguilera, you know, he was actually doing all right in this thing, even though he was eating a lot of them one-handed jabs. He was fair and okay. At least I thought he was. Because, you know, this, this other prisoner dude, this snitch guy for sure, it had to be a snitch because everybody in there was, you know, he says to me as I'm watching this, he taps on my shoulder, he's like, Joe, Joe, do you see that? That. I see a lot of that. But what you talking about that? I'm looking up here. What you looking at? This other prisoner says to me, he says, Joe, do you see that? Pointing to the ground, I haven't been looking at the ground at all. Last time I looked at the ground was when Colgate was getting dumped on the ground and then getting up uh, with a flat tire. I've been looking up here at these one-arm tabs. That's what I've been looking at. But down there on the ground, it was brought to my attention and I looked down there and I see something, I don't even know what I'm seeing. I'm like, what is that? What, a, what is that? And ladies and gentlemen, what it was, was doo-doo. Doo-doo balls. And I'm not talking about that prison meal that we made that one time. I'm talking about legitimate ones. And they're trickling down. Like, it's almost like a candy machine. Like a candy ball machine when you put the quarter in, you twist the thing, you watch it come down. You pull it out. That's sort of like what this is, except it's way more disgusting. But, you know, you don't have to wonder for too long, like, which one of these guys uh, is getting beat down from the seat down. See how I threw that one liner in there right there? Uh, comment down below, <clears throat> genius, Joe, genius. You don't have to wonder because the culprit, the man responsible for the man taking the beat down from the seat down, it was Christina Aguilera. Because when Cole, and like, you know, I, I, I fancy myself somebody who knows how to put a puzzle together, and uh, like a mystery, an investigation. Even though I've never been a police and I've never told on any... I, I, ironically, I feel like I'm good at solving unsolved mysteries or mysteries or whatever. But from what I gather, from what I pieced together, when Colgate came down the stairs swinging that... Uh, swinging that wound up Three Stooges type of overhead tornado haymaker, he connected, I mean immediately, he connected like Jose Canseco. Bang! Out the park with that joint! 
And I'm gathering, from what I gather, it was from that connection when Christina Aguilera stumbled a little bit, you know, that the, uh, that the, that the grippers let go. They let go. And all the while, while he's engaging with Colgate, bang, bang, bang. It's almost like he's just, Colgate's just pushing a button. Boop, 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 boop. Because you can see this coming down his pants leg. I immediately am at like, what? I got no words. Nothing I can say describes this any more than how I've described it thus far. To watch two guys fighting, one guy with a, with a blown hubcap, the other guy looking like a gumball dispenser, except it's not gum. To watch this take place is probably one of the craziest things I ever saw while locked up. Most, most certainly it is. Maybe I kind of like, I, I'm having a hard time remembering exactly what happened next. All I know is the guards are in the housing unit next. They're in the cell block. And both of these guys are kind of like laid down. So maybe the guards came in and were like, get down, get down, get down, get down. Maybe it was something like that. Or maybe they just beat each other down. One guy did it with one arm. The other guy did it being like a gumball machine. Bloop, bloop, bloop. But you got Christina Aguilera laying down on the ground over here. And you got Colgate laying down on the ground over here. And the guards come in. And they're like, oh my God, who did this? Who, who do do? I imagine that had to be the most embarrassing moment in this guy's life. It had to be. His face, you know, it said it all. He was super embarrassed by this. This guy's grippers let go when he got hit that first time and just continuously did so throughout the course of this fight. And as if that wasn't crazy enough. You know, the, the guards, they're picking this dude up. This is probably something they don't see very often at all. Maybe they do. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how often it is. I, I've seen this happen in the UFC before. person literally get beat down from the seat down and end up with some brown stains on their shorts. You know, so I know it does happen. But I can remember the guards, they picked up Dudu Man. I mean, uh, Christina Aguilera, they picked him up. And they're taking him out of the cell block. Meanwhile, gumballs were still just falling down his leg. And they went to go get Colgate. And, you know, when they try to get Colgate up, Colgate's like, this, hey, 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 I get my arm, my arm, I need you to get, my shoulder's dislocated. I need you to pop my arm back in. This man fought a fight with an arm dislocated, with his shoulder dislocated, and his opponent was getting beat down from the seat down. And, you know, all of this stemmed from saying the wrong thing. Got to be more careful. You've got to pay attention to what you say. Some stuff that might start off as a joke can definitely be taken to a level that you didn't expect it to go to. I didn't expect it to go there with Tyson, even though I called him out. I'm the one that reacted to that situation, as stupid as it was for me to do so. Christina Aguilera didn't expect Colgate to react the way that he did. You got to think about the things that you say. You got to pay attention to the words that you utter when you're serving time. And you know what's the craziest thing about this is, you know, like I said, I feel partly responsible because I'm sure... It was me who brought it to Christina Aguilera's attention in the first place. Talking about Colgate's breath. The words that would ultimately be the fighting words needed for this situation to get to where it got to. So if you like blame me for this and feel like I'm the bad guy, you know karma would certainly play a, play a part in this. Because when Colgate was removed from my cell taken to the hole, having his arm like jerked by guards to get back uh, in the socket, and... Christina Aguilera, the same situation, taken to uh, the toilet and probably to the hole as well. I would be left without a cellmate for a couple of days. And you know, it's the greatest feeling in the world to have a cell all by yourself, especially a top corner penthouse luxury cell, all away from, as far away from all the other riffraff and commotion as you can be. But you won't remain celly less for very long. It might be a day, a couple of days, a week at the most. They're going to find somebody. They lock people up. I, I don't know if you know this, but they lock people up all the damn time. And I will never forget, I was downstairs talking to somebody, maybe talking about a tattoo. I don't remember. I can't even sit here and act like I remember the conversation I was having. But then all of a sudden, I see somebody new coming into the cell block. You can see him coming down the hall, getting led by a guard through those big plexiglass windows, and this dude is huge. You know, the guys in the, the cell block, they start to talk, and they start to squawking is what it is. Hey, we got one. We got one. We got a new guy. Hey, new guy. New guy on deck, hey, fresh meat, whatever it might be. So you've got all of the prisoners saying, new guy, new guy, hey, new guy coming in. And it's almost like it's in slow motion, you know, because I'm hearing this, and as I hear it, it registers in my mind, Joe, you've got the only open bunk in the cell block. Whoever this guy is, 
He's gonna be your cellmate. I'm thinking this. These are the things that are beginning to register in my mind as I hear those crows calling. And then I'm slowly turning around. And by the time I turn all the way around and I see the guy coming through that door, big dude. Looked like Debo, but his walk weren't like Debo's at all. In fact, he wasn't doing too much walking. He was kind of switching. You know what I mean? With the little Junies. And when you see a man switching while locked up, you already know what that means. Because not only was this dude like switching, he was almost, he was almost like diva. He was like a diva with it. Like he, it was like, like he was on a runway in a beauty show. But he wasn't no beauty model. He looked like Debo, but he walked like he thought he was delicious, which is exactly what this guy's nickname was. Big D, AKA delicious. Hey, look, that's all the time I got for right now. Uh, you know, maybe some other time I can relive the time that they moved a guy into my cell that looked like Debo, but was nicknamed Delicious. Boy, karma, karma is something. Joe, you should have never said what you said that led to Colgate and Christina Aguilera, bung, 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 and then you ended up with Dirty D, Delicious, Big D, as your celly. Blah. Hey, look, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did so, please leave a like and a comment letting me know exactly what you thought about it. As always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day. Peace!